The Lady Dior bag is a bag that I really adore. For me, this is one of the most classy, elegant and timeless handbags out there. So even though this is not my most used handbag, I know it will stay in my luxury handbag collection for a long time. However, not all Lady Dior bags are created equally. In the recent years, Dior has introduced many versions of Lady Dior's, including the canvas Lady Dior bags, which I personally don't really care for. Call me old-fashioned or boring, but for me, a Lady Dior is not exactly a Lady Dior anymore if you take away the very structured silhouette. For me, that feature defines the Lady Dior bags. Also, Please let me know if you agree with me on this, but I feel like the Lady Dior bags are not very forgiving in the sense that they don't tolerate changes very well, especially if you compare them to the Chanel classic flaps. For example, a very slouchy looking Chanel flap made of canvas or denim can actually look really cute, but somehow it just doesn't translate quite the same way on the Lady Dior bags. By now, you've probably gathered I'm not a big fan of the canvas Lady Dior bag. But you know what? It actually doesn't look that bad if you put the bag next to the new Lady Dior Dijoy bag. This bag just doesn't look quite right for me. The best way I can describe it is, it looks like a large Lady Dior, but with the top half missing. I'm not sure what Dior was thinking because this bag is certainly a bit of an acquired taste and it takes a certain character to pull it off. All that being said, I'm not always against every new Lady Dior bag. For example, I think the mini Lady Dior bag is super adorable and it's such a good alternative for the Chanel mini flap. The next one is Celine. Now, I'm not sure if you guys are with me on this, but what is going on with Celine? In my opinion, Celine was at its peak when Phoebe Filo was the creative director. That was the time when Celine was all about understated elegance and effortless classiness. I think Phoebe's designs were so popular because they were subtle, sophisticated, and yet wearable. Sadly, a lot has changed since Phoebe's departure from the brand. At the moment, Celine no longer feels like Celine, at least not the way it used to be. Every time I browse their website now, I find their new designs to be quite disappointing. Their current handbag selections, for example, don't look very inspiring or even appealing. I personally don't think there's a sense of cohesiveness with their pieces and everything just looks a little bit all over the place. In fact, a lot of their pieces now look very much in your face. If you have a look at their handbags, you will see they now put a lot of focus on their new logo, which is called the Triumph, I believe. I guess this new logo is a way for the new designer to leave his mark on the brand, but I just think it looks a little bit tacky and over the top. I also get the impression that Celine now just add this new logo onto everything and call it a day. I personally am not a big fan of this change and I feel like especially after all the amazing work Phoebe had done for Celine, they need to do a lot more to keep their customers happy. Anyway, please let me know if you feel the same or am I just being too attached to the Phoebe's glory? Moving on to Balenciaga. Some of you know I really enjoy this Balenciaga mini city. Sadly, this exact handbag is no longer available, which is such a shame because this is such a lovely and practical handbag. Now, I bought this bag about six years ago at about £780. And right before it got discontinued, the price went up to about £1,100. So it wasn't a small price increase. This is why I'm quite convinced that the demand was there. So I'm not sure why would Balenciaga stop such a popular collection. Now I did find the Balenciaga Neo cargo bag on the website and it looks quite similar to the Balenciaga City, but it is slightly bigger and the shoulder strap is not quite the same. Anyway, it looks like the new Balenciaga City collection now has a new twist to it. 
instead of the very casual and relaxed aesthetics, the Balanchaga city now looks very structured. Although the similarity is there and you can still tell it's a Balenciaga, I feel like the essence is gone. I mean, a lot of people, myself included, went for Balenciaga City because of the soft slouchy leather. Like, that is the main selling point of this collection. But somehow, it's gone. To be fair, Balenciaga has retained some of the very classic features, such as the leather tassels and also the metal studs. But in my opinion, they just don't look like they belong to a very structured handbag. While the Balanchaka mini city has gone from slouchy to structured, it looks like the Givenchy Antigona has gone the other way, including the Antigona Soft and the Antigona Sport. Now, I wouldn't say these bags look unattractive, but at the same time, they are just not overly special or exciting. Part of me also feels like maybe it's time for Givenchy to move on to creating a new classic line rather than playing with the Antigona collection. The general feeling I've been getting from social media is the Antigona fever has gone for quite some time and even people who used to rave about these handbags have moved on. That said, if I had to choose between the classic Antigona and the Antigona Soft, I would quite happily go for the latter because I've always thought the classic Antigona bags look so chunky, bulky and in the way. Next, let's talk about Louis Vuitton. They recently released the Bubblegum Collection, which features the very puffy looking smooth calf leather with the Louis Vuitton embossment on it. Louis Vuitton included the Elma BB handbag in this collection, and I'm not a big fan of it. To be honest, I don't actually dislike the Bubblegum leather. I just don't think it goes well with the Elma BB handbag. One of the handbags from this collection includes the over the moon bag. Although I don't see myself wearing it or buying it, the leather does complement this handbag. Now, I might just be a bit boring or uninteresting, but for me, the Louis Vuitton Elma is supposed to look classy and structured and not spongy, puffy or overly casual. Now, I'm probably coming across like I hate every single new bag design, but that is actually something that I really like, which is the Hermes Birkin Salier. Although strictly speaking, this is not exactly a new handbag. The Birkin Saliers were introduced in 2010, but only as a very limited edition. However, as from 2020, the Hermes Birkin Saliers are now available in the size 25, 30 and 35. I personally really like the looks of the Birkin Salier, although I might be a bit biased because I usually prefer structured handbags. My Hermes Birkin 25 is in the Epsom ladder and I really enjoy it. Anyway, I think the outside stitching goes really well with the Birkin and it gives the bag a very clean and sharp look. However, I would only ever consider the size 25 because as some of you know, the cellier stitching tends to make the bag look a little bit bigger visually. So for example, an Hermes Kelly cellier 25 tends to look bigger than the Hermes Kelly Return 25. I've always thought the Birkin 30 is way too big for me anyway, so the Birkin Salier 30 will never make it to my wish list. Something else I wanted to mention is, because of the Salier stitching, the edges of the bag are quite sharp and well-defined. I have an Hermes Kelly Salier 25, and I find that I do have to be more careful with the edges because they kind of stick out a bit and therefore they are more prone to knocks and bumps. Now the Epsom leather is fairly durable and scratch resistant, but if the scratch or the indentation is fairly deep, it can actually be quite challenging to restore Epsom leather. So you might just want to factor this in if you're interested in any Hermes Epsom pieces. Generally speaking, I feel like a lot of luxury houses are capitalizing on their classic collections a little bit too much. 
to the point it's beginning to feel like they are doing new launches just for the sake of doing new launches. Sometimes I wish they would just consolidate their effort and resources into creating something new that will stand the test of time. So those are my thoughts about some of the new luxury handbag designs. If you're new here, my name is Eileen. And if you are into luxury minimalism and intentional spending, do consider joining this lovely community. Until next week, take care and I will see you in the comment section.